Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of being on camera, although I still find this the hardest part of the whole process. Despite this, the channel is progressing nicely as your likes, comments and subscriptions really do make a real difference. So let's try to keep that momentum going. As a reward for all your support, I will be having a free subscriber giveaway once I'm back in the UK. So why not subscribe now to ensure you don't miss out? Also, due to popular demand, the Patreon prize competition will be returning at the beginning of March. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to post them in the comments section. I love interacting with you guys, as without you I wouldn't have a channel. If you take the time to post, it's only right that I take the time to read them. Today's topic is a little sadder than usual, however I didn't record the process, so you won't see anything unpleasant. At the end of the last update, I informed you that one of my favourite fish had to be euthanised. He is very special to me as he was the first fish that was picked by someone who was very important in my life at the time. Anything pink was the criteria, which does add a somewhat limiting factor, as I certainly wasn't going to be leaving the store with one of these guys. The fish purchased that day was Bruno, my pink scooter blenny. Sadly, one morning I came down to find Bruno acting strangely. Visibly, he appeared fat and completely healthy, but he wasn't moving, just sitting in the corner of the tank. Realising something was very wrong, I caught him with just my bare hands and placed him in the frag compartment of my sump. This way I could monitor him better. While in the sump, he still didn't move. I placed his favourite food, lobster eggs, literally under his mouth, but he still showed no interest. He would move when touched and was incredibly skittish if anything went near him, but other than that, he remained in the same position. It was at this point I realised he was completely blind. Although his eyes didn't suggest this, as they looked perfectly healthy. Being blind is a big issue for any fish to overcome, but when it comes to scooter blennies and dragonettes, it's a death sentence. These fish are precision hunters and use their eyesight all day, every day, to catch microfauna hiding amongst the rockwork. They have a ferocious appetite and need to eat constantly to maintain their body weight. Over the next 48 hours, he didn't move an inch, and the deterioration of his body was rapid. He quickly turned from a plump, healthy fish that would even eat pellet food to the very sickly looking fish we see all too often in local fish shops with this species. If you're in this hobby long enough, there comes a time when as carers for these delicate creatures, we need to make some tough decisions. It would have been far easier for me to just let him waste away, but as I felt he was already past the point of no return, I made the decision with a heavy heart to euthanize him. He was clearly suffering, but what sort of actress am I if I'm only willing to do the easy parts? I removed Bruno from the tank, placed him on a towel so that he wouldn't slip around, and with the point of a knife I found the hole just behind the eye. The process took less than 15 seconds. The experience was very unpleasant, which to some people will sound silly, but as a vegetarian and animal lover, killing is just not in my genetic makeup. This is only the second time I've had to do this since I started keeping fish, and I still remember the first time which was a 4 inch maroon clown about 8 years ago. The reason I wanted to put this in a video is because we wouldn't let a dog or cat suffer, so why should a fish be any different? All too often I see people ignore an issue where it is clear the fish doesn't have a chance to recover. I'm still not really sure what happened to him, and I've looked extensively on the internet to see if anyone has had a similar experience. I've only found one other account of the same symptoms in a scooter blenny, and as expected, that individual died. Unfortunately, its death appeared to be a little slower than Bruno's. I do have a possible theory, although I may be way off. You may remember that I added seven wrasse to the tank last year. A canary, silver belly, male and female melanaris, two female peacocks, and a possum wrasse. These would have decimated the microfauna population in the tank in both number and variety. Although Bruno was fat and eating both a range of frozen food and pellets, it's possible that the lack of natural fauna created a vitamin deficiency which led to him going blind. It may sound far-fetched, but our tanks are always in a very, very delicate balance, and changing something small can significantly impact something else without us ever realising it. A good example of this is when we use carbon, a mature tank which has never had carbon in it has a slight green tinge to the colour of the water. This tinge filters out some of the light reaching the corals. Once the carbon has worked its magic and the water is crystal clear again, 
suddenly the corals are being exposed to much higher levels of light than they're used to. This can cause some of the more light sensitive corals to bleach, something I'm assuming that the majority of people wouldn't think about when they first use carbon. If something as simple as adding too much carbon can throw a system out of sync, it's quite possible that the addition of seven stealthy predators could do the same. Of the seven wrasses, the ones which are most dependent on a steady supply of microfauna are the two leopard peacock wrasses, and for this reason I've decided to move them to a new home, as I'm not looking to repeat what happened to Bruno, and they're known to be tricky when it comes to diet. If you think what I've suggested is unlikely, and that you have a different theory, please let me know. This hobby has been built on hobbyists sharing information, both success and failures. It doesn't matter if you've been in the hobby a day or many years, there is always more to learn, and if someone can add to my current skill set, I'm more than happy to listen. Stability is the key to this hobby, so slow down, have a think about what you plan to do next, and consider the consequences. My tank didn't look like this overnight, and I've learned some very sharp lessons on the way. That's it for today guys, have a good week and I'll see you next time.